is happening guys and welcome back to another Pokemon Ultra Sun and Moon Wi-Fi battle. Today I have a PU match, this one's against Gara, and it's been a long time since we've battled, but every time we do we end up having some really good matches. So, uh, this is a new team that I built, I kind of just brought back some old homies that I haven't used in a while including Frostitute. I also brought a, uh, a barrel just because I wanted to test that thing out along with the wall core of Gorgeist and Cradilly. So I'm pretty happy with these dudes, and looking at my opponent's team, he's got some threats, he's got the uh, Alolan Executor, I see Cricket Toon, so I'm thinking potential Sticky Web, he's also got Manectric that could be a problem, anyway, let's go ahead and just hop into the battle here. Alright, so I was expecting him to want to lead off with that Cricket Toon, so I'm gonna toss out my main girl Zapadash here, um, Zeb Striker comes out, basically just to get a nice little Volt Switch going, and kind of just scout out for matchups, as he ends up leading off with his Weezing, so this is fine by me, I can get a Volt Switch off here, it will hurt this thing quite a bit if he decides to stay in, but he's actually gonna switch into Fuck Yeah Sea King, who does have the Lightning Rod ability, so that thing's just gonna go ahead and eat up that Volt Switch, and it's gonna give it some special attack, luckily you don't see special attacking Sea Kings, so he's probably not gonna be able to use that too well. But I'm just gonna switch directly into my Gorgeist here. I know that Sea King doesn't really carry much that can hit uh, hit this pumpkin for much damage. Unless it has like Ice Beam, in which case then it, it would take advantage of that special attack boost. But he actually ends up going for the agility there, and that is a fast ass fish. But he realizes I'm gonna just go right for the Will O Wisp and kind of just hinder that Sea King from really being able to do anything. So he decides to go ahead and switch right into the Alolan Executor. His eyes are up there, and he's just staring at his titties all the time. He, eats, he wants you to make some eye contact. But uh, I get the Will O Wisp off, and he actually ends up having the Lumberry. I assume he, uh, I think these things are harvest, so he's gonna be able to get that Lumberry back, and uh, it's good to know that I, I'm not gonna be able to, uh, to status that thing. So I'm actually just gonna switch right into Cradilly. Um, I expected this thing to go for like a Draco Meteor. You do generally see special attacking ones, but uh, Gara always brings some really interesting teams, so he switches things up a bit as he goes for the. Uh, the wood hammer here is going to hit me for quite a bit of damage. I can actually live it with 14 HP, and this allows me to set up some stealth rock. Um, the unfortunate news is that Cradilly is pretty much useless at this point, and that really does kind of suck because this thing is actually really important on this team. It handles all special attackers, and uh, it's, it's really useful, but I don't have much to do at this point. I have to kind of just stay in. I did get my stealth rock up, which is nice, and uh, unfortunately, though, that allows him to go ahead and swing that big ass head of, ahead of his at me, and that, that is going to kill my Cradilly. So. If there's anything good about letting that thing go down, it's that I get a free switch into my Frostitute here, so I'm actually just gonna go right for an Ice Beam. I don't want to overpredict or miss a Lovely Kiss or anything, so I just go straight for the Ice Beam as he is gonna bring in his Fuck Yeah Sea King, so it's not gonna do a whole lot of damage to this thing, but I know it's not Choice Scarf and it won't be able to outspeed me, so I'm actually just gonna go ahead and activate that Normally MZ and get a nice little, uh, little Z Lovely Kiss going on. It does actually give you a plus two speed boost um, as you use it, plus it puts him to sleep. And that is not too bad, because now I'm faster than his whole team, and Jinx is ready to just do some damage. So I kiss that thing right in the old lips, and uh, at this point, I can just go straight for some Psy Shocks. I don't really have anything else. I probably should put Nasty Plot on this thing. It would make it a little more useful, but I go for the Psy Shock here on the old Sleeping Fish, and that is going to take that thing out. So hate to see Sea King go down, because I do love that thing, and fuck yeah. But uh, So now he is going to go ahead and switch right into the Manectric. I decide to go for the Lovely Kiss, because Jinx is just always used to kissing two people in a row. Um, unfortunately, I missed though, so Jinx, you, you really just blew it there, as this allows him to go for an overheat, and that is going to take care of uh, Frostitute, so that kind of sucks, but you honestly got to expect to miss Lovely Kisses, the accuracy is terrible, and Jinx just did it, forgot to wear her contacts today, so that sucks, but this does allow me to go into my Zapadash here, I decided to go for the Volt Switch, um, honestly, I just did not expect this thing to stay in, seeing as it has that special um, attack drop from the last overheat, I really expected him to switch, and then I would get a whole lot of momentum being able to get that Volt Switch off, but he stayed in and he goes for another overheat there so at this point I'm like you know what I'm just gonna go ahead and just go for my own overheat because I don't want to mess up again as he is actually gonna switch into the Alolan Executor again so firing off some overheats here as that is not gonna be able to take this thing out but luckily even with the special attack attack drop I should be able to finish it off with one more so I go for another overheat and that is gonna be a dead Executor that thing wasn't too big of a threat because it's really slow and uh, I do have some stuff to take care of it but that's gonna be uh, it's gonna take care of the old palm tree so I don't have to worry about that thing and Zapadash is getting pretty low, I only have a couple more Life Orb hits in me, as now he's going to bring in the Danger Stash, and Cricketune is hilarious, he, honestly, you never really see this thing, I don't know what it's going to go for, I'm kind of expecting Sticky Webs, but I'm just going to go ahead and switch right into my Gorgeist here, as uh, I'm going to frisk it and actually find his Choice Scarf, so I, I feel that thing up and I'm like, hey, you're wearing a scarf, huh, he looks, 
It looks nice on you, buddy. But it goes for the Fell Stinger. It's not going to take Pump King out because I'm a fucking monster, as I can take pretty much any physical attack. But to be honest, it would have been cool to see Cricketune get the attack boost from the Fell Stinger and then just come in and sweep with the Choice Scarf. That would probably never happen, but it's still kind of cool. But I'm just going to go right for the Leech Seed as he decides to switch into the Knock Towel. And this is an interesting matchup for me because I know I can take like at least one Air Slash if that's what he decides to go for. Um, but the Leech Seed is actually doing quite a bit of work here as that puts me back to full. And honestly, as I'm looking at the matchup, I, I realize that Gorgeist isn't going to be all that useful for me in the rest of this. So I go for the Synthesis, actually thinking I was going to be slower. I'm just trying to get some health back from uh, being able to take an Air Slash. But he, I have speed him, so that's kind of weird. But he goes for the Defog there. Um, Defog doesn't get rid of the Leech Seed, unfortunately. I, Rapid Spin does, but you would think Defog would as well. But that, that, that kind of sucks. As um, I'm just going to go for the Seed Bomb, just try to get a little bit of damage here. As I don't really have any switches in to this, uh, to this Knock Tower, I don't want to risk anything. So I stay in and just go for the Seed Bomb, as he is going to end up roosting, which is quite annoying. And I'm like, damn, that's going to put him back to pretty decent health here. As the Leech Seed is going to be still taking a toll on this thing, plus the burn. But once I see Roost, there's really not going to be much progress being made here, seeing as Seed Bomb's really the only thing I can do. But I go for one more just to make sure there's no funny business. I don't want to switch um, something into a hard-hitting attack as he actually ends up going for the Psycho Shift. So I'm glad that I didn't switch directly into Hitmonchan here, which I was going to do. But the Psycho Shift would have really just been a terrible move uh, burning the Hitmonchan. So that's perfect. I was kind of waiting for when he was going to go for the Psycho Shift. I assume he expected me to switch out there, but I stayed in and that worked out perfect for me as he's going to go ahead and get that Flame Orb again. And this time, I feel like like it's safe to switch as I'm going to switch right into uh, caught him red-handed the uh, the Hitmonchan as he goes for the Nightshade this time luckily he doesn't go for the Psycho Shift expecting to switch and uh, the Nightshade's not going to do much because after the leftovers and the Leech Seed it's going to be looking like Hitmonchan's pretty damn nice so we got the got the old man skirt rocking jumping around over here ready to uh, ready to ice punch some shit so um, I am going to be able to outspeed this thing, but I expect him to switch into that Weezing. So I'm going to go ahead and double switch here. I, uh, I go into the Zapadash expecting the freaking Weezing to come out, but he Psycho Shifts. Um, he's, he was just going to stay in and sack off that Noctowl anyway, which does actually make sense. But I tried to catch a prediction there, which doesn't really work out for me. But the Leech Seed is going to take care of the Noctowl. And uh, after I take this burn damage, uh, freaking Zeb Strike is looking pretty much like in the same position here. I have... 29 HP, not too bad, but I do want to save this thing because it's fast and I can hit pretty hard with Overheat and Thunderbolt. So now he's going to go into the Cricket Tune. Luckily, I did frisk it and I was able to see that it had the Choice Scarf. So I don't want to get outsped and I'm just going to switch right back into my Pump King. Go ahead and feel this thing up one more time just to make sure he's still rocking that scarf. And I say, hey, that's, that's still a nice scarf you got there. But um, the Fell Stinger is not going to do much. Pump King just over here eating it up as I am burned. A burned pumpkin is, you know, kind of annoying, but not too big of a deal. So he is going to switch out here, and he's going to go into the Weezing, which I was kind of expecting. And uh, this is kind of not too bad of a matchup for me, because I can take Sludge Bombs and Flamethrowers pretty damn nicely. Plus, the Leech Seed is just going to be super annoying. So I'm just getting all sorts of Leech Seed going on here. Gorgeist is putting in the finest of work. As uh, you, would, you would think the, the health that would come back from... Weezing wouldn't be, you, you don't want to, you don't want to suck up the fucking gas from that thing. It seems like that would just hurt, but, um, I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. I am going to go for the will o -Wisp here just to get a little bit more continual damage on this thing, and I really don't mind losing Gorgeist here. I actually kind of need to, considering... Um, if Gorgeist goes down, it'll give me a free switch, and my plan actually at this point was to be able to get Bay Barrel in freely, set up some Swords Dances, and then be able to pretty much finish off his team with the, uh, the massively boosted Aqua Jet. So, that's kind of what I'm going for here, and at this point, I realize I'm getting hurt. I know he's going to go for the Flamethrower. I really can switch in Bay Barrel kind of freely, so I am going to go ahead and actually just stay in one more turn. I go for the Seed Bomb one more time just to make sure that I do catch him on a turn that he is going to go for the Flamethrower, as this time he actually goes for the Toxic Spikes, and I'm like, oh, okay, so he is switching things up a bit, and I, I don't really want my Bibarel to come in and get um, like a toxic poison. So I feel like this is a perfect opportunity to go ahead and freely switch in my Bibarel. I know that he's either going to go for the flamethrower or just another layer of the toxic spike. So after Pump King gets a whole bunch of health from the old lead seed, it's looking like Weezing is actually in range to be knocked out from a uh, from a return or a waterfall. So I'm going to go ahead and switch in the old angry beaver here. He's ready to uh, ready to just get pissed off and just put in some work here. So I haven't used Bibarel in forever but honestly this thing is super scary with its uh, simple ability it give it, it doubles the effect of stat boost so he does go for the flamethrower as uh, I come in and get that regular poison not too big of a deal and after the leech seed it's looking like I am pretty damn ready to go here angry beaver is as angry as ever and ready to go so 
I'm gonna go ahead and just dance with some swords. I decided to go for the swords dance here. I do need that um, to be able to finish off the rest of his team with Aqua Jet. So I go ahead and bust out the rusty swords, get that drastic attack boost. As he does go for the sludge bomb here, and quite unfortunately, he gets a freaking critical hit. Which, it doesn't kill me, but it is gonna make it so I am gonna go down pretty easily after uh, my life orb recoil and the poison damage. But I do luckily get some leech seed, which is gonna put me at like almost 60 HP. And then after the poison, brings me down to uh, a decent amount of health, but it's not looking like... I'll be able to get the sweep I was expecting. So, at least I can go for the waterfall that is going to take care of the wheezing. So, that thing is gone. It's always fun seeing defensive walls go down to a barrel. But, uh, after the life orb and the poison, it's going to leave me at 2 HP, luckily. And he is going to now go into his Krikatoon. I can get one Aqua Jet off, which is nice. So, that's going to take care of the Krikatoon. And, uh, but barrel almost did it. You, you, you're, uh, this is actually my first battle using this thing. So, it almost worked out. Almost got that late game sweep. But, uh, I am going to go down to my life orb there. But I am proud of you, Babero. You're uh, you were not an HM slave today. So his last Pokemon is gonna be this Manectric, and I decide to go into my Zeb Striker here. I know that um, he can't hit me with a Thunderbolt. Obviously, I'm just gonna go right for a nice little overheat as I am faster. It is not gonna be able to take this thing out, but it is gonna put it in range to be um, taken care of from the priority Mach Punch from my Hitmonchan. So he's gonna finish me off with an overheat as well. Just a couple of electric types getting heated over here. Nice little heated argument happened there, but uh, it looks like Manectric won. As luckily though, I. I do still have my freaking Hitmonchan, so I'm going to come in, get a little bit of poison, which really does not matter, and then a Mach Punch is going to take care of the old Volt Bitch. So, that's going to be the end of the match there. Always a good time whenever I battle this dude, and uh, so yeah, it was a pretty fun one. I am really liking this team. PU is pretty damn interesting, as always, and uh, yeah, so go ahead and hit that like button on this video if you enjoyed, and don't forget to subscribe for some more Wi-Fi battles. You know the deal.